Hey all, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host Jinx and we are joined as always by the best and brightest in the pocket network ecosystem. I'm uh, super excited. There's been so much going on this week, but I do want to lead in today with uh, something that may require some support out there and a little bit of chat around. Uh, today is the handoff from uh, Grove to Nodes of the uh, public endpoints. So I expect we're probably going to see a little friction in this because we have no idea how many people are actually using those public endpoints and whether or not they've seen any of the messaging around. So uh, first off, if you do see anybody out on Twitter in public, uh, you know, who's saying that my my pocket links are broken, uh, make sure we point those to point them to one of the resources uh, around updating those URLs. Uh, we want to try and get that uh, back on track as quickly as possible. I did hear from Blade early today that uh, they are prepared to send all that free endpoint traffic back to Pocket Network today. So from uh, an analytics perspective, uh, we will probably have some fall off in total relays, but it should start amping up uh, pretty quickly as they uh, as they get everything posted over there. That being said, uh, it probably is also going to mean that there are some uh, reduced rewards across the nodes in the network. Um, given that the the uh, daily inflation uh, metric will have to be updated uh, to account for the change in total relays, and that's going to lag behind a little bit. I think they do that weekly. Uh, I don't see, oh, Zach, you're on here. Pretty sure that's a weekly governance transaction, right? Um, so it'd probably be the end of the week before that's adjusted. And I imagine that means over the next uh, two to three days that we're probably gonna see a drop in total earnings on nodes. If anybody has anything else to add to that from an insight perspective, uh, we can chew on that for a few minutes. It'll be the beginning of next week. Transactions are run Monday night, Eastern. Monday night, I think Jack, okay. Yeah, I think that's when Jack does it. That's when, whenever he does the governance transactions to burn the tokens, he does the other ones at the same time. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. So we'll be five days of lowered rewards and then it'll adjust to the new normal and then it'll adjust every week thereafter. Um, yeah. So that, that's kind of how it looks. Questions, thoughts, uh, other stuff around that? All right, cool. Arthur is correct. Well, hey, good to have confirmation there. Mondays are when it runs, solid. Okay, so realistically, until that adjustment is made, uh, it's probably not gonna, yeah, no worries. It's probably uh, going to be some lower yield days uh, as that traffic changes over. And I would expect that given uh, that Nodis has uh, rate limiting and such in place on the free endpoints that it's probably going to be a net uh, uh, downtrend in total traffic for a, a few days or so here, um, especially before some of the, the new customers are, are coming on. Um, so, you know, just, expect that and uh you know communicate that accordingly with uh, the folks in your ecosystem any other thoughts or questions about that i'm just going to say what I, I wrote earlier internally um most of gross traffic is going to be paid right the whole ecosystem the whole expectation for pocket network to work is to have a flywheel where all the traffic is paid for we have an on-chain burn that we have to pay regardless if the traffic is free or not. But I think knowing to the community at large that over 90% or approximately 90% of the traffic coming through Grove is paid for could potentially bring some warm and fuzzies. I know there's gonna be short-term pain with the node runners. I'm not ignorant to that fact. Uh, I'm just saying that we're moving into a stage now where we're not just giving everything out. We are actually covering our costs. And um, just like all the other centralized infrastructure providers, they have their own costs and uh, that they have to deal with. We're doing the same thing on our end, uh, but we're basically moving the network to its next stage officially today. Excellent. I'm I'm personally, uh, you know, looking for that day when basically 98% of total traffic through the network is paid and uh, that we're at a place where we've hit the volume and the appropriate pricing ratios to, to have that full one-to-one -one burn. 
you know, that for the long term health of the network, those are all the goals that we need to be focused on. So, um, yep, a little bit of of uh, pain on uh, the uh, dailies for now, but hopefully resolved fairly quickly and with a, a healthy and sustainable ecosystem behind it. All right, any other uh, thoughts on that? Beautiful. Well, in that case, um, I guess from there, uh, Fred and Art, do you guys have any uh, updates aside from uh, the endpoint changeover that we need to know about? Uh, nothing major to report. Beautiful. And Zach, your mic isn't working for some reason. Totally get that. But uh, any updates from the PNF side that uh, we need to push out? Join our community call tomorrow. That's at 11 a.m. EST, I believe. More info on all the changes. Yeah. Oh, 8 a.m. PST, 11 a.m. EST. Yep, perfect. Because I am not trying to get on a call at 8 a.m., let me tell you. I did that for the Korea call, and whew, I had to wake up early and double caffeinate. Um, I actually just thought of something. So, uh, Solana, that we've had some discussions in the public chat about this. Um, I'm hoping to have some docs by the end of the week that we can publish on what we want to do with uh, Solana um, in terms of what we're thinking. Right now, I think we're going to roll a new chain ID. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be called yet or what the chain ID will be. The expectation will be to support approximately six epochs worth of data. Um, and it will the node will be expected to support, um, let me find the list of SPLs that we have working today. Um, token SPL. Uh, let's see. I got to scroll through my list here. Um, here we go. Uh, token SPL, um, SPL kin, and SPL token owner. So there will be three SPLs required. Um, the hardware requirements will be pretty tough. Uh, I think it estimates at around one terabyte in RAM, uh, six terabytes of storage. Um, and yeah, uh, compute, I think the normal compute is expected, but if you want to perform highly, I think you'll want to throw more compute at it. So that's preliminary, but I'll publish more uh, directed information about that as we lock in with the demand side exactly the universe of requirements. Perfect. I, I was looking at uh, the requirements on Solana nodes and Jesus, they are challenging to run. Yes, sir. We love Solana. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, those are all the core things that I wanted to get out in front of uh, the call today. Uh, I'll open the floor from here. I, I know that there are multiple proposals in the forum right now that are either open or voting right now. Uh, and I would love to get some feedback from y'all on which of those you have what opinions on. Shane, I'll totally call you out because I know you've been talking about them in the den. Uh, I mean, yeah, there was some conversations about some of the economic proposals. Um, and I just made some points about how at, at a certain scale, um, and I think, I don't know, I, I would guess estimate around 6 billion relays there might be some issues on uh some of the chains um because uh there would need to be um i think it was 30 uh 
like Ethereum nodes on the network, but um, but the economics right now is capped to where all those extra nodes that need to be on the network would have to code runners who are already running at a loss. So there's not a um, anyway. So the economics are just so that if we were to get a whole lot of relays um, to the network, there mm-hmm. would need to be economic changes uh, to incentivize there to be enough nodes on the network to handle all the traffic. So that that's what I was at least responding to in the uh, in the forums. Beautiful. And I know that there are some very contrasting opinions, for example, on like uh, Gandalf and, and the per chain uh, or chain per node uh, limit adjustments. Uh, it seems like there are are it's sort of an either or people love it or hate the idea. <laughs> Um, and, and I, I have to say, uh, that I, I am not entirely sure of, of how that works out. And in some ways, like, it seems like just rearranging current node placement and maybe creating an additional pocket sync by requiring more pocket nodes to service the same number of chain nodes. Um, but I, I'm not exactly sure I follow the, the intended benefit or, or outcome of that. I mean, the if we're talking about Gandalf, the the benefit is is very straightforward. It either uh, how it how it is now is someone wants to get network average, they have to run basically you know around fifteen chains to get close to network average. Um, whereas with Gandalf, someone could just run one node on one chain uh, to get network average. Uh, there, there's some misconceptions or misinformation out there regarding you know needing to add more nodes to the network or nodes aren't going to get as much or something like that that's not it at all it just allows an in to be connected to 15 chains it can just be connected to one chain to generate revenue so in a world where you know pocket is doing uh you know uh 10 billion relays and needs what i think like 60 you know, would need, you know, 60, uh, just Ethereum nodes, would need 60 full Ethereum nodes. I mean, you could have all sorts of people just spinning up Ethereum nodes all over the world to be part of that 60. Once Pocket gets to five, uh, 50 billion, you'd have to have 300 Ethereum nodes. So it would make sense to allow there to be decentralization to where you don't have to have this huge infrastructure burden of running 14, 15 chains just to generate network rewards. Um, you know, right now, uh, it, 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 right now, the pushback has been mostly that this will require more of providers because they would have to, uh, you know, kind of change their setup some. And I understand that, but I mean, I, I think the question is, what are we in terms of a, a network? So if we're trying to be decentralized and we want to be able to scale uh, to where we don't have to rely on providers um, and the network can just scale where if there's market value in a certain chain, then someone starts serving that chain, then we need to adjust it. Um, there, isn't a, uh, there isn't a current network that allows you to, that requires you to run 14 15 chains just to get a network average. Um, I know that Lava and other ones out there are all one chain per stake. Uh, and so I'm not aware of any other that have done it like Pocket, like Pocket, because it actually promotes decentralization. But uh, it's not helpful to providers. So that's where the trade off is. Do we help providers right now or? Uh, do we allow the network to individuals to run things on their own and not need to be a provider? So quick question, <clears throat> two questions. So I haven't read through the proposal. I'm being honest ahead of time because my questions may come up a little ignorant. Um, and there are quite, there are more just questions that I've had. Um, it's on my to-do list to get through this proposal this week now that a lot of other stuff is off my plate. Um, so the first two questions are one, what type of people do you expect to 
I guess, set up one node, one chain, or one node, five chains. Um, I ask because, um, right, we have quality of service checks and there's now multiple gateways. Um, and each gateway is going to do whatever it's going to do under the hood uh, with the sessions that it gets returned from the protocol. But the assumption I guess I have, and this is just a me assumption, and I'm, again, I'm not in the code here. I'm not making any changes nor directing the changes that should be made. But my assumption here is that node runners that are just one-off node runners that are kind of just sitting in the back trying to are, aren't going to be super competitive here like they're not going to be operating at any any type of profit if they're like these homebrew people like me just running like a couple nodes um out of my out of my basement type of thing and i i know that this helps with the decentralization narrative but I don't know if the economics will be in place there. And again, like I said, I have not read your document. And if your answer is just go read it and ask me questions, that's fine. My second question is, and this is something that Fred just wrote as well, is does this proposal of yours also require us to change how we do stake, staking in general? Because if one node right now has 15 chains, and I think you have it positioned as one node should have no more than five, that basically means we need to lock more tokens up, like triple the amount. Um, and that's obviously not a bad thing, right? It's better for the network, I think, overall, um, to have more of this locked up. Are, are you expecting people to actually go down and do that? Do you expect the number of nodes to increase or decrease were this to pass and eventually get implemented um, as people begin consolidating? Um, because it's a lot more tokens than what people currently have available to them. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll answer that right now. It doesn't require any more stake. What it does is it just distributes how many nodes are on each chain uh more in, in a balanced manner it doesn't add any more stake to the network um it just instead of having uh uh I, like an example was moonbeam was more than uh 200% what it should have been uh like they had so many more nodes were staked on moonbeam than uh what it would technically you know need for balance within pocket uh the reason that that happens is because those nodes are only losing it was like 0.19 pocket a day from being on an overstaked chain while there's other chains that could use more nodes so the penalty is hardly anything 0.09 or, or 0.19 pocket is is basically nothing however if you adjust uh to where max chains is something like one then they would be penalized nine pocket a day that's significant so then that means that those nodes that are just sitting uh you know as one of their 15 state chains instead of them just sitting on a on a chain that doesn't have enough relays to support that many nodes uh it would penalize them so then those nodes would actually need to go to uh go to uh, another chain where they're uh you know go to another chain so where there would be uh it'd be more balanced in the network so it basically uses pocket's own economics to balance the network where if someone is going to run too much on a chain they will be penalized right now there isn't a heavy penalty and so large staking providers will just pick you know 10 15 chains and just camp on those chains and the whole, and really the only real importance is the the few money chains and then after that uh all the other chains they can just park and you know uh they don't have to try to balance out or really go many places uh and that so okay so anyway so that's that it doesn't require any more stake it just so one quick one quick follow up on that i appreciate that answer i understand now why you that that specific answer but a follow up to something you said um, shouldn't it be on the specific node runner to figure out through their own analytics if they should be running these nodes or not? And rather than us being as over provisioned as we are, as I think you're saying, we have, uh, you gave the Moonbeam example, wouldn't it make sense for them not to run those nodes um, rather than trying to make this change, these parameter changes? I figure, figure like the pressure should be there, the dynamic pressure from getting relays or not getting relays should force specific providers not to do what they're doing, but they're still doing it. So is, it, is the question there, do they not there's care not for enough. these losses? There, there's, yes, exactly. There's not enough pressure to uh, 
to uh, make people really want to balance out pocket network. There's just not. So if you can be 200% staked on a, on a chain and it and it's less uh, what nine of you know two and a half cents, it's 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 tiny, right? It's it's absolutely tiny. Uh, now there are some node runners uh, that are very um, uh, you know they 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 like to squeeze the most out of the network, right? And they run tons of extra chains because uh, they're trying to get ahead. That you know, so there is an element. There is elements that are balancing in the network, but there's also elements that aren't balancing in the network. Okay, uh, so the, the, a question there then. All right, because you're getting to some other point. I think I'm trying to make. Okay. So there are bigger players or players in general, but I guess the emphasis here is bigger players that are adapting to the network with the current conditions and are, let's just call it successful in capturing relays, right? I'm not saying profitable or sustainable. I'm just saying successful in capturing those relays. Otherwise they wouldn't be doing this for as long as they're doing it, I would assume. Um, wouldn't that naturally cannibalize the, the folks that, like, wouldn't that pressure just come in anyway over time? Like given right, uh, given right now that, as Jinx said, we're probably going to see a reduction in relays given that free tier traffic is, has to manually move over from one provider to another. There's going to be a shock to the system right now um, uh, regarding, regarding this setup. Isn't that going to help kind of do what you're trying to do with Gandalf slightly? Just so you know, instead, of, instead of doing it at the parameter level, it's just going to, do on the, it's going to be forced from demand side pressure. So I think this is a misconception that Gandalf is trying to fix over provisioning or something. That's not what it's trying to fix. That's just one of the uh, that that's just one of the side effects. Is it does encourage a more balanced network? But that's not what it's trying to fix. Uh, yes, there will be even with how Pocket is now, there still will be changes inside of uh, you know if if receive node runners will you know make changes because. That's, you know, node runners still do care about the little bits. Um, but what I'm saying is one of the side effects of Gandalf is it promotes real uh, distribution to where over provisioning is not as as it is today. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Ben Van, did so, you have something to say? I, I know sorry, something you did. I had one more comment. Yeah. Sorry. And, and then I'm done. Uh, I'm, I'm done. Um, and thank you. Um, so the goal here for you is to is, is eventually what's just full on going to the decentralization thesis, a bit deeper, deeper, right, to make sure that we have more nodes that are separated that are separated out and just not have the level of over provisioning. I think my my rudimentary like uh, my immediate thoughts after just this conversation, again, prefacing with I have not read through this and this is the first I've discussed about it out loud is that I still feel that at the end of the day, the best node runner setups are still going to win out, irrespective of what the conditions look like at the protocol level, because there's various node runners that will adapt to that setup. Um, and while I think I like the spirit of this, I don't know, right this moment, I don't know if I agree with it, but that's only, only because I, again, I haven't had more than 10 minutes to think through this in my head. So I appreciate you giving me these those answers. I just want to make sure I'm thinking about it the way you are trying to project me thinking about it. I'd like to um, speak a minute here. Um, the, I mean, Shane is right. This, it's not directly addressing over provisioning. That's not what it's about. It's more addressing this current phenomenon where only large well-staffed organizations can compete or they have a huge advantage. Um, it's making it possible for someone who can run a server well to be able to participate. Currently, you have to be able to run a minimum of 15 servers well, 15 different chains, keep them up to date, current, stay on those forums in order to be a provider of quality, right? Um, you can't 
make money as an Ethereum expert. You can't compete if you're really good at Ethereum, if, as long as that's the only thing you're really good at. You also have to be good at the top, uh, at the other top 14 chains, or you're at a st- money disadvantage. You also have to have the capital to run those other 14 chains, or you're also at a disadvantage. This simply cuts it into smaller pieces. It makes life a little more complicated for the current big players who already do run 15 chains, right? Because we've got to segregate our fleet into, instead of one fleet running 15 chains, we need to segregate it into three fleets running five chains each. Okay, it's harder work for the big players but it makes it possible for someone to run one server really well. Yeah, and that is literally a perfect explanation, Ben Van. And going back to your question, Arthur, uh, about what, what's really the value of, of you know, just one node uh, for one chain, wouldn't it be better if it was in the hands of the providers only? Uh, and that's a perfect example here, Ben Van, is what about uh, a partnership for Grove like Scroll? If there are, there are absolutely people in the Scroll community that are competent running Scroll nodes, but they can't participate in Pocket because in order for them to participate in Pocket, they also need to become experts in 14 other chains. That's absolutely madness. So why, why not allow the experts from all these other communities to participate in the chains that they're passionate about and that they understand and know about. That's how, that's literally how we marketed the first chains that we added to Pocket. I talked to Avalanche. I talked to Fuse. I talked to these initial chains that we all added. And the value prop was your node community, your validator community can generate rewards on Pocket. But what while that was possible when the network was young, as it matured and as it became more competitive, you can't just run an avalanche node and generate network average. So you can't have someone who's competent in avalanche be a part of our ecosystem. No, to be a part of our ecosystem is only for our ecosystem. So that limits who's buying our tokens to, to, to join the network, uh, to stake. It, it, it completely destroys uh, diversity in our node ecosystem. Most people don't understand that much of the... Pockets providers use other providers' backends. So even within this last year, there are less chain nodes on the network than ever before, and they're managed by less people. And I would, and you know, Arthur, you being Grove, how many times have you had one node, you know, literally one node uh, affect Grove's quality of service? That's never happened. <laughs> like because there's so many more nodes for you to choose from, but how many providers have affected Grove's quality of service? Because there are because an entire chain is controlled by one, uh, you know, one provider. So I know for a fact Grove has had many issues with quality of service because of how nodes are run, and it typically goes back to one provider uh, that holds a large percentage of the network. That would start to be eliminated because professionals from any network could now join Pocket. And Pocket actually becomes an ecosystem for every network. So that's, so that's where the misconception is, is that you have to be some kind of fancy node provider and have knowledge of 14 chains in order to provide good service to Pocket. That's not the case. Um, I mean, and I would ask how many node pilot users have prevented Grove from uh, providing good quality of service? You know, they're the independent guys. How many have, you know, how many individual nodes have Grove had to pursue to uh, fix their quality of service? It's just never happened. That's the beauty of decentralization. Well, sure. Okay, so I think you kind of sold me off a little bit between you and Ben. And, uh, ben, ben. So I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. However, I think one thing you're not aware of is we've de- most definitely had one node provider, smaller chains or one uh, th- that has caused issues for us, but that is not an issue. I think that is partially an issue of the node runner, but it's actually an issue at how we were doing quality of service at that point in time. Um, 
Uh, an issue that we get very frequently, I'm sure Fred can speak to it if he wanted to, and there's no need unless he wants to, is people staking uh, the wrong chains for the wrong chain ID. Mm -hmm. um, and I meaning either, and we're not talking about like staking completely the wrong chain, but staking a non-archival chain for an archival chain ID, and then that causes us issues. So we've been putting in changes in place for that. Um, but I just wanted to kind of just say that, yes, we've most definitely had issues with single node nodes from single node runners, and they have all more or less all been addressed. But I also to go to your point, um, when it comes to things like Solana, which is literally the chain that causes us the most heartache, um, constantly talk about it. I don't think that a week goes by without us having at least an hour long conversation about what to do there. Um, it would be great if a proposal like this one would enable specialists to come in rather than having generalists. And if that's what this brings in, it does a net value, net positive addition here. I think my worry here is when I was thinking about it from my first, you know, cursory read through is a reduction in total nodes because the stakes stay the same. So if you're running one or two chains, like if you're running Moonbeam and Moon River because you're a polka dot specialist and um, what's it called, then you still have to stake the same 50 or 60, uh, but you have, I, sorry, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to try to say it. What I'm trying to say is more to, more nodes are going to need to be set up and more pocket is going to need to be locked up. But I don't know how many people are willing to lock up more pocket to get the same amount of rewards. But I guess you fix that in your proposal. Okay. Yeah, I got it's, it. I got it's, it. it's not. I've convinced it, myself off of it already. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's okay. not. That, that's a misconception. And that misconception, yeah, yeah. yeah was going around. And it was, uh, you know, trying to. It was painting Gandalf as something that it's not. That's not it. So that is completely false, which is why yeah. I've been so active with trying to at least address it uh, on both the forum. I've answered literally every single person's question on the forum and anytime uh, I see anything in chat. So I'm very consistent with addressing uh, misconceptions or people's misunderstanding about it. So, no, that's not at all what it does. I said it does. Um, uh, in terms of it allows, yeah, a Solana person join because uh, there's no reason so, why the whole Solana community, every validator, you know, why not have them be able to double dip on rewards? You know, that's why we launched in so many chains and, and we actually had all of these uh, uh, like Twitter spaces with Avalanche, uh, with Avalanche folks because they were pushing it to their communities. We don't have people pushing, you know, any new chain that we add. We, we don't have that community pushing their community to, to be a part of Pocket because there's no reason to be a part of Pocket unless you're a provider competent with 14 chains. It's it's just, it's absolute madness. It, it doesn't make any economic or business sense in my mind, other than it does allow providers to, it, it, it does allow us to be a provider only network. Is there value so, in only being a provider only? I'm not sold. So one of the things that um, uh, I, I was trying to push earlier in the year is so, I think, as we mentioned, we mentioned one or two of the big um, gateways that are using us. And we have, I think, five or six gateways that send us traffic in spurts or consistently. And each one of them, um, except, except in Fura, I talked to them um, specifically about becoming node runners as well and potentially onboarding new chains as they want to decentralize their traffic or like kind of playing both sides here, kind of like how what I guess Nodis is doing just from the reverse, right? Nodis is a node runner that became a gateway and we're talking to gateways who may want to put some new, uh, bring on new chains by putting their own nodes on the other side since they're already prepared and just putting a pocket node in between. A lot of them don't want to get into that business. Um, they just want to get out of the node running business. So, and a lot of them do things like staking, validation, et cetera, uh, as one of the ways that they do make money on their RPC, on their nodes. And they have just not found it to be a business that they want to continuously be in. So I would like to think that if we go to these communities that they'd want to go in and become node runners, but I'm not getting that signal yet that that's the case. So maybe it's just the way I'm pitching it. it doesn't make sense. And I've gone down like as deep as creating spreadsheets for what the rewards would look like on a given on a per chain basis. So, you know, Fred and I have done both of this earlier in the year and we just stopped because it wasn't a value proposition that was making sense to any of them. Um, so I'm curious, like, even if we go down through this, I'm actually curious how many specialists would come in the door. I think the other one with retail, I think that is a bigger 
that would be a bigger signal, right? Because there's plenty of people that just run nodes just for shits and giggles that <laughs> have no business running nodes to begin with. But if they're able to very easily, then why, why not, right? That helps with our decentralization thesis. And that yeah. helps. I, I would push back against the, you know, people running nodes that have no business running nodes, because I, I'll be honest, I think uh, I, I, a, a, an Ethereum node, a geth node, is a geth node. There's no special sauce about it. There are some chains that require a special sauce, which is, you know, the chains that you regularly have to deal with, like Solana, yeah. uh, where you have to have a legitimate special sauce. But for most nodes, it's just a node, and it just needs hardware to run. And all that, uh, right now, all that Pocket's been doing for the last year is consolidating onto less and less hardware, but in a manner that is, le uh, that is uh, less and less diverse. So the idea of, okay, well, let's open this up to where any professional that knows how to run a server can uh, add their hardware to Pocket and generate rewards without needing to be this, you know, this have knowledge on 14 separate chains. Like that makes no sense. And why is it that we have other chains copying us are structured and things like that, but no one is trying to set up economic models where you have to be competent in 15 chains in order to be a part of the network. What, what network is trying to copy that right now? No economic model that any other network has proposed is anywhere near that. There, it, it, like it's all you stake per chain uh, or it, one stake, one chain, basically. You, and that's how everyone has been. I don't, if, if, if I'm mistaken, then let me know. But we have people absolutely taking cues from how we've structured certain things, but no one's trying to go with that economic model because it, it requires, it literally is designed for consolidation. And then consolidation is what leads to real QoS issues. Running a geth node is not hurting pocket. A node pilot user, that yeah is run, running a uh, geth node on an nvme you know system that they have sitting at home we have people in this call that literally bought hardware and, and host it in their homes yeah those are good notes and good, as good as anyone else's uh and the idea that yeah that that adds bad qos is is a misconception i mean we had the foundation talking last year about you know, one of the, the goals being to get people who are already running nodes in other chains as validators or whatever else, adding a pocket layer onto their existing infrastructure, right? But there's no point in doing that right now if you fundamentally can't compete in the network unless you're running that 15 chains. And and I, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. And I have to say, I know that you've been doing a lot of work out there from a comms perspective and trying to to clarify things, but that's part of the reason I asked today is it just still wasn't clear to me what that impact was. And I think this conversation has brought a lot of clarity to that. So imagine Ethereum, uh, their validation network, right? Imagine Ethereum had a requirement that you also have to run 15 other, or 14 other a validator on Ethereum. Just imagine that, yep. like imagine that narrative. You know, <laughs> how many people would be running Ethereum nodes with that node or, uh, you know, quality, still quality validators. But how many people would uh, how would uh, Ethereum's validation pool be if, oh, you can anyone can actually be a validator, but you also have to run 14 other uh, to where you have to run all 15 at the same time in order to be a validator on the network. Like that makes no sense in any Web3 ecosystem. But for Pocket, <laughs> that's where we're at. And we're trying to address it. And I'll just, I'll just hop on that for a second and say, okay, also while you're running 14, um, because you need to run 14 to you know, play the game, um, how much are you going to care when number 14 is misbehaving since it's only responsible for about one-tenth of 1% 1 of your total earnings? Right. How quick are you going to wake up when you get your pager duty call and get that server reset? <laughs> right. um, it, it's we have it was a good idea when we implemented it. It helped us grow uh, because we had a limited number of people willing to run nodes at all. Um, but it is not a good model. We should get down to one. In my opinion. Can I have a say? Um, this is Tony. 
First of okay. all, um, Jinx. Uh, hi, Benve. I mean, I love your work. You know me, right? Um, I never, first of all, I'm, Shane. I'm my very first customer, man, or one of yeah. my very first customers. Good to hear from you, buddy. I'll, I'll, I'll stop yeah. talking. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, first of all, Shane, um, when you wrote the proposal, right, if you said something like Ben Van, everybody would have agreed. But the way you presented was so MB, I mean, it was too difficult to understand. Even I was reading it, I was like, oh my gosh, what does he have in mind? But Ben Van trying to explain it in layman's term, it makes sense, you know what I'm saying? So Yes, I mean, I think it's a your what you're saying is really good idea, and that's exactly the idea also pocket network that I was you know thinking of before, and of course having the W pocket now or even the proposal that um, is that sharing of the um, non custodial right? I mean that kind of if you explain it like Ben Ben mix up with W pocket usage. Or even the um, node reward sharing proposed by um, Coder, then people can chase after you know Ethereum or Solana. And I, hey, do you have a node running? Can I have Pocket? Can we share 50-50? I mean, these things can happen. Yeah. So I think can you like you know ch change some of the wordings in your um, proposal? to reflect what Ben Ben is saying so everybody understand what you are trying to do. Well, I have been hoping to, uh, I, I was banking on the Ben Van comment to bring clarity <laughs> and guidance to the whole ecosystem, but uh, I guess I, I guess I didn't get it. So that's on Ben Van, that's not on me. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, obviously, obviously there's, uh, you know, there's, there's more that could be communicated. Um, I was very technical and very detailed uh, because I do know because I was suspecting that it would be providers that would push out um, what the case has been. And anyone who kind of hears what Gandalf is, uh, that at least I've talked about in uh, uh, Telegram or in the forum, uh, on on a on a level, I've not really gotten any pushback. All the specific pushback has been specifically from providers. And that makes sense because it is throwing a wrench in their current systems. And it, uh, you know, it, it does change what the node scan landscape of pocket would be because then you could have professionals from any chain just suddenly join and be a part. So, um, yeah, so uh, gr right now for, for clarity, right now there's a proposal to fix the max chains parameter, because right now it's basically broken, where even if the DAO were to change it, it wouldn't have an effect on any of the existing nodes on the network. Because so there's no enforcement. There's no enforcement of it. So it's like we have a parameter, but no enforcement of it. So what's the purpose? Uh, so I have a proposal that uh, fortunately H5 Law has already uh, submitted the the code necessary to make that change. So it just needs to be tested. Um, I need to put it up to vote. I, it's now been a week, so now I can put it up to vote. So I'll put it up to vote today. Um, and uh, that simply fixes the, the chain so that Max Chains is operating the way it's supposed to operate. Then I will have a, a follow-up proposal that then uh, suggests what the you know Max Chains parameter should be, which is Gandalf. Now, what where Gandalf might have been a little confusing for folks is I actually did all the economic work to objectively show how much damage, uh, economically speaking, the uh, the current system is. And where I was focused on the technical, uh, and I could have just skipped the whole technical and just you know went on strict. Uh, uh, just concepts, just general concepts, and maybe it would have gotten more, uh, more under more folks understanding it. But um, I did all the details uh, and actually the economic modeling, showing and and part of that was also to show what V1 should be because this is objectively bad for the network. Uh, and so we also are looking to V1. Well, this actually gives a you know all the data necessary 
to just say, okay, V1 will just be one stake to one chain, period. So that was part of the reason of adding all the technical. But I, I thank you for the feedback. And uh, it would be great to have it clearer. So maybe I'll uh, take uh, some of Ben, View, uh, ben Van's uh, points here and, and uh, add it when I do a proposal for changing the parameter itself. And I think that that's worth taking back to the uh, the the community groups and such as well, and and really getting that information out there. I, I had not at all connected this change with impact to quality of service, and and especially how it fosters you know bringing in outside experts at a single chain. That that whole concept right there, honestly, that single paragraph, a hundred percent solidified in my mind. Arthur, are you sold on the Van Ven's um, explanation? Sorry, it was muted. Yes, I am. Um, well, I am. I'm, I will vote in favor for this to happen. I just think it'll take a while to get implemented because just like the other proposal that just went through, I think some parameter tweaking is going to be involved. Um, I'm curious for a separate conversation at a later date how this should all go, actually, how this will all come to transpire. Um, uh, but yeah, I guess, um, is there a place where I can leave my feedback? I know sometimes it helps with votes when the uh, PNI Grove, whatever, uh, kind of puts their opinions. Is there a place would you, you want, can you just send me the link to the latest version of the proposal and I'll happily put my two cents in there. The um, premature. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll post a link. Okay. Thanks. So Shane and Venben, considering that let's say this proposal is gonna you know be a put on vote what should be the max i mean ben ben just said it should go down to one and i'm also leaning towards one but how about two well then that just means there's gonna you know if someone you know that's a solana expert would also need to be an expert on some other chain as well Again, that's 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 what max chains basically means. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I yeah. if I can, all right. Um, the right answer is one. Um, if we want to, I mean, it's a it's a straight math equation, and and it obviously goes to one as being the right answer. If we want to do it in steps, if that would make it easier for the big node runners to step down and step it down to five, and then three, and then one, that will, you know, I, I'm not against that. Um, but the right answer is one. Uh. So a quick question here for the we, the chains that aren't um, well supported. Uh, is the, is there going to be a change to the number of sessions, number of nodes that are returned to in a session? Is there going to be a requirement for that? Because right now it's set to 24. Um, and then we stake giga stakes based on how many sessions we expect to have to run. There's like a lot of stuff that is built off the 15, the fit max chain being the 15. There's a lot of like spider web logic that's in place that right. I am maybe assuming is spider webbed and connected. It might not, not be. But in my, in my mind, there's a lot of stuff that's connected that might have, this might cause a cascading effect of, parameter changes that may need to be thought through or modeled out. So this is, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, this does affect the ecosystem. The benefit of doing it now in Morse is those things can all happen progressively. So I've already stated that I, I believe it should happen progressively. Uh, I think we should probably go from uh, five to, uh, or, or go down to uh, 10, or five like uh, honestly i'd probably prefer five as a first step go down to five figure out what uh uh you know it, it would take a little bit of transitions i don't believe you need to change your app stakes however app stakes are very lopsided so you know i know you know but it's like most app stakes from my understanding are staked on eth uh and then there's other app stakes that only have very very few app stakes so anyways uh I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some balancing that needs to happen on app stakes. But in terms of in terms of the transition, we can do it progressively in Morse. If we were to do it 
uh, in Shannon and just push this off to Shannon, it has to be an all or nothing. If we're going to do Shannon with only max chains of one, well, now the entire ecosystem has to change all of a sudden. Um, there's already enough transitions happening in Shannon. It makes absolute sense to test some of the stuff out, figure out some of the economics, figure out how it affects other elements of the network in a progressive manner in V0s, so a testnet of sorts, a try. We already had an MVP. We already had a uh, V0. We want V1 to be V1. So let's start working with the parameters that V1 is going to represent. And just a, a top question uh, to answer Arthur's question or to address it, it's not to dead answer it. We can do the math on the distribution, but this actually should help distribution availability of nodes in a session rather than reduce it. Uh, it will reduce total number of nodes available in the big, big chains because those nodes will move to be available in the small chains. Um, but there's no shortage of people staked on Ethereum. I mean, if, if half the nodes currently staked on Ethereum went and staked somewhere else, you'd still have way more than, than 24 available for each session. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think um, I'll comment on that, Ben Van, and I totally agree. Um, I think we're already in a state where we're talking about moving past the concept of giga stakes in the gateway. Um, so a relay is not going to be limited to one app stakes worth of nodes. And I also agree that with 1,600 plus state nodes on Ethereum mainnet, if that were to shrink to 800, I don't think that would harm quality of service. I actually think that this should drastically improve quality of service across the network because it should reduce the number of people trying to game and make sure that they're hitting network average or win more rewards by having or claiming that they support and staking for chains that they don't actually support. Um, yeah. I can give a current example is that someone on Polygon Archival is being very naughty and is using uh, the anchor free public endpoint for Polygon Archival on their staked node today. That's so. bad. That goes away, though, if you don't have 15 slots, right? You can only stay that, for one, and if we find that person, then we say bye-bye. Yeah, absolutely. And what it does is it also, the average, most chains, uh, if Pocket was perfectly balanced right now with, uh, with, with the max chain set at 15, most nodes would do less than 2,000 relays a day. Less than 2,000. Like, that that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. You go, you switch it, and now they're doing sixty thousand. If you go down to one, they would be doing sixty thousand relays a day, which is still tiny compared to the capacity that these uh, that these uh, nodes can do. But still, what it what it what it is is it it's actually making a node fully utilize instead of having fifteen chains that it hardly utilizes. It's just consolidating all those relays into one chain that it heavily utilizes. So it's way better for the network overall to have that kind of uh, that kind of in incentive where you don't have to waste all sending two less than 2000 relays to 15 chains. Um, also, Shane, um, you said five is what you are thinking of right now, but I mean, the way Ben Ven is saying and you are explaining, if we are going to disrupt the ecosystem in this from 15 to whatever, then we should just go right to the right answer and go to one and, you know, let everybody adjust to it instead of going to five and go to three and go to one. Just, you know, hard press one and then we move on. I, I agree in theory. It, it feels like, a lot of times in the past, we've made changes in a slower, progressive way when potentially we should have just ripped the Band-Aid off. Inflation comes to mind. Uh, you know, I I agree strongly with just going ahead and, and making the strong play. Well, then really the what would need to happen to make that possible is there really does need to be support um, and rallying support because you have to understand 
the the majority of active voters on pocket are the large node runners. So, you know, if 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 uh, yes, ripping the bandaid off, I personally would be fine with that. Yeah, rip the bandaid off. You could go to one, which is exactly what it should be. Um, uh, but if if node runners feel you know and want to vote against it because they feel uh, you know it's too much to handle right now or something like that, that's where you can come up with a progressive way. Okay, this month we're going to be uh, at five, and in two months we're going to be at one, and you have time to kind of adjust and feel it out. So if there's enough support for one, then we can absolutely go for one. Um, it's just we are at the place where the large node runners are the most active voters and typically decide what happens with Pocket. So, and they're the ones that have also uh, given me pushback on, on Gandalf, uh, both publicly and in the forum. So just got to take that game theory into account. Um, Shane, considering that most of the, let's say, reward share is at 20% to the provider and 80% to the staker, right? I mean, even if um, we change from 15 to 1, the providers shouldn't be worried about their revenue because actually, right, I mean, they can just bump up the reward share to, let's say, 50 60%. I mean, that was what it was in previous years. So right now, everybody's playing chicken game with these 15 chains. I mean, it's it's going to be the stakers who have to choose which chain that they want to, you know, um, go into, let's say, Ethereum or Solana, whichever. And actually, the providers just have to ask the right amount for whatever they're going to run. I mean, Ethereum is cheaper than Solana, but they can charge 60 bucks for everything, you know? So it's not going to be that bad for the providers. I mean, people just don't want to change. But if we are going to do, just go one, and then, you know, we vote for it. I think, Tony, uh, to your point, I, I think it's more that each provider is going to have to get a little more, either build themselves as being a specialist, or if they build themselves as being a generalist, they're going to have to figure out a way to either um, constantly do, I don't know, I don't want to call out specific partners, but I know the specific node runners. Some of them have a bunch of nodes that are running hot and they constantly swap them based on what they're seeing going on in the ecosystem. I'm not sure how much of that needing to constantly uh, restake chain IDs is going to have to happen in this world. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's going to be another new parameter that node runners can play with here um, because people can now build themselves as specialist runners. And if someone really wants to put their tokens because they believe in a specific ecosystem, they can. Otherwise, they'll go to the generalist and just say maximize for revenue. Right? It's just, I think it's just, an, I, I don't know, naively, I think it's just another way of capturing specific types of customers and a net positive at the end of the day. Actually, it gives us uh, an advantage to the uh, the faster, wh whoever can change fastest um, gets, an adv gets an advantage. Um, so it once again kind of helps the small player, um, the smaller node runners, um, or whoever's willing just to watch the network more closely, which is currently what's happening as well. Whoever watches closely and changes quickest um, gets, you know, gets a slightly better gets a slightly better payment. Um, the large providers are less motivated to change quickly um, because the amount of nodes that they're moving will have such a huge effect on a chain that they hit. Um, whereas if we were down to individual chains. Um, there would be greater motivation to balance out. Um, I know that didn't come across very clearly. I apologize for that. But I only see it as a benefit for the small players. I think this has been an extraordinarily productive conversation, adding a lot of clarity around thoughts on uh, the network and such. Um, and uh, Breezy, I would love to dig into that next topic, but I think we're going to have to save that till next week. We are past the top of the hour now, and I know other people have uh, calendar appointments that they have to get up to. Um, 
But thank you very much, everyone, for your participation in the conversation this week. Big thanks to Shane for helping us understand uh, Gandalf uh, and, and really driving that home. I think with a lot of us now really understanding the impact uh, that, that will, it'll be much easier to, to you know, drum up support for it. And uh, that's it for now. Appreciate all y'all's time. Uh, same time, same uh, channel next week. Thanks, James. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Peace.